Hi, this is the elevator that Mitch and I built. If you want to see how we did it, there's a link above. Just click on the link. It'll take you to that video. Uh, since then, we have got a lot of comments from people, about a lot of them about safety. Most of them um, were nice comments. We appreciate that. But a lot of them were about safety. So, you know, at one point we added these fall arresters, which worked really well. Uh, but we wanted to take it up a notch. And we designed and built this braking system uh, modeled after the Otis Elevator, the original Otis Elevator style braking system. So how is it actuated? Well, we want the brake to engage anytime there's any loss of tension at all in this rope from the hoists. Let's start with the bars. We call these the jamming bars or the jam bars. And what we want them to do is to jam into the rails on the side. So let me just show you a little bit of this here. We want these bars to come down and jam into the side like that, pivoting on this pivot hole right here. One on this side, and obviously one on the other side too, pivoting here and jamming into the side rails, okay? Behind this bar is a ring that looks like this. The ring is attached to these bungees right here and anchored on the platform of the carriage. It's also attached to the jam bars by this cable right here. And it's also attached to this cable right here, this one right here, which is connected to the hoist rope. There's a downward force on the ring via these bungees. There's an upward force on the ring via this cable attached to the hoist rope. So the hoist rope is causing or creating the upward force that is preventing the ring from pulling down on these cables attached to the jamming rods. The ring is in equilibrium. There's a downward force and it's being canceled by an upward force, which is the hoist rope. If the hoist rope loses tension for any reason, that upward force goes away and it allows the downward force, the bungees, to pull down on the ring, which then pulls down on the cable, which then actuates the jamming rods on each side. When the jamming bars are engaged, as you can see, they press into the soft wood, creating a jamming action pivoting right there. It basically spreads between the rails, seizing the carriage in its place. We think that the angle of the jamming bars is crucial. Uh, we, if they're too steep, they will just bounce off the wood without engaging. And if they're too shallow, then they won't cause a jamming action. We need the jamming bars to grab the wood and then let the weight of the carriage cause the jamming action. The bungees do not supply the pressure to create the jamming action. The jamming action comes from the bars contacting the wood, digging in, and jamming. Let's take note of one other thing, the limiters. Um, we knew they'd be important, and just for kicks, Mitch and I tried it, uh, try to try to put some weight on it without the limiters, and they did what we thought they were going to do, not to quote Denny Green. Um, but these bars came down and swung right through. So we installed the limiters so that they cannot do that. They do have to stop right there, and they work perfectly. Okay, what you're looking at here is 300 pounds of sand 
and the cable has no tension on it. What you're looking at here are the jamming rods that are holding the carriage up, okay? So when Mitch and I first built this elevator and we uploaded it to YouTube, we were really surprised at the popularity, all the views that we got and all the, I mean, just a ton of comments. Pretty cool, really. Um, but I'm thinking that one of the reasons it was so popular is that we built this without having any special tools. We use the kind of tools that most households have around drills and dremels and saws and things like that. A bunch of trips to the Home Depot store. We didn't do any welding. Um, plasma cutting, things like that. We don't even have a drill press. And we could have farmed out some of the stuff and did this on this particular project, but we wanted to keep it sort of the same way that we did the elevator. So we didn't use any welding and plasma cutting and stuff like that to create this thing. And I think that's important to, to note. Um, the other thing is be careful when you build this. I know a lot of people are building these things. I'm really surprised that I'm getting comments from people all really all around the world seeing they're building them, which is kind of fascinating to me. But when you're doing it, please be careful. Um, you, be careful when you're building it. Be careful when you're operating it. Be safe when you're operating it. Mitch and I built this. We know exactly what it will do. We're not concerned about the safety aspects of it at all because we're really careful when we operate it. We know what the strength of it is. But when you do it, do the same thing. Overbuild it for strength and be really careful. There's pinch points that you, know, you can get injured with and things like that. And just be careful with that. We hope you enjoyed this video, so like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.